Eevee is being replaced with a new version of the render engine called Eevee Next, and you're going to want to use it. It has improved realism, including ray tracing, better emission lighting, subsurface scattering, and more. And best of all, it renders even faster in the viewport, meaning you can make realistic images on your potato PC. Which begs the question, will Eevee Next replace cycles? Most likely not, but stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll talk about how that might be changing in the future. But in the meantime, you want to learn how to use Eevee Next. So let's dive in. Here is a render from Cycles from my upcoming short film. And here is that same render in Eevee Next. And here they are side by side. And of course, Eevee Next was able to render within a fraction of the time. So here we are in Blender with a scene that I'm going to be using as an example to show the difference between the render engines. And I also want to clarify here that when you go to download from Daily Builds, in this version, I'm using a version from October as the most recent daily build seemed to be a bit broken. So I went ahead and went back a bit further. Now, once I am here, you can see currently I'm rendering in cycles. I can come up here to my render engine and switch to Eevee or Eevee Next. I believe in the final version, these will be combined into one, but for now we have separate options. So if I come up here to the render engine mode, I'm currently in cycles and I can switch that between Eevee and Eevee Next. Now, I believe that for the final version, they will end up combining these, but we'll see how they decide to answer those. So I can quickly cycle between these and we can get a good idea of how each render engine handles the look. And you can see how EV Next is improved with how it's handling its shadow and its lighting. And that comes from the fact that it has this new option here called ray tracing. You may notice that when you switch between EV and there that we are losing some categories such as screen space refractions and ambient inclusion and gaining others such as horizon scan and ray tracing. Let's break those down and how you can utilize these new features. Now, first up, don't be scared off by horizon scan. It is actually basically just the same as ambient inclusion. As you can see here in the developer notes, they have some examples here with screen tracing and horizon scan, global illumination added, and also some comparisons here between the different render engines. Now I've tinkered around with the newer versions and we do get more controls here, and they're pretty similar to the ambient inclusion controls. But let's dive into ray tracing. If you don't know what ray tracing is, this is when the render engine traces the ray of a light as it bounces around a scene and gives us a more realistic interpretation of how light is handled in a scene. And now within Eevee, we have that in real time, which is what is giving us this more realistic rendering. Now, once you twirl that down, you're gonna get various options here. And what's most important is going to be the resolution, the clamping, and the precision. These are gonna be the controls that you use the most. Now, first up, what we have here is resolution. And if you hover over here, it will tell you what it means. You'll see RPP, and that stands for ray per pixel. So right now it is set to one fourth. And what that means is that we will get one ray traced for every four pixels. If you are experiencing lag, you can go ahead and put this to 116. And you'll see that if we zoom in here on our character, a bit, you can see how that is changing as I click between the two. Now, one ray per pixel is going to give you the most accurate rendition, but take the longest to record. Now, of course, clamp here will clamp your light sources. So if we go ahead and set that to one or zero, you can see how that's darkening it, just as you would expect clamp to work in most other places of Blender as well. And then down here, we have precision. Now, the higher you turn this up, the more precise the right rays will be calculated. However, it will take a bit longer to render. Now, some other big features added into to the scene here is that you can see here, I have this kind of fabric material on the ground. Now you may think that I have a mixing texture here in the background, but that's actually by choice. I have a ramp from purple to blue to create that nighttime effect. So what I want here is for this fabric to be displaced to give me better rendering. Now, if I switch over here to Eevee, you can see that's completely flat. And that's because Eevee doesn't support displacement, but Eevee Next does. So if I come over here to Eevee Next, you can see that I now have control over the displacement. I'll go ahead here, I'll grab my ground here and under my displacement map. Now that's a little trick you can know as well. You can displace just the geometry near the camera. So in this case, I only displace the ground up here and that saves some render time. Anyways, you can go ahead and plug it into your displacement node just like anything else and have control. If I go ahead and click there, you can see that now we can actually displace our geometry in real time which is extraordinarily exciting as displacement usually contributed to extremely long render time. So being able to do this in real time and save time on your renders is incredible. Another great example where this type of displacement can be useful for fast rendering is in this clay shader here that I am using on my cat here. 
you can see that if I turn up the displacement, I can actually view that displacement in real time. Something that's very difficult to do in cycles as it'll lag too much when you move around the viewport. Now, next up, I wanna talk about how we can actually get support for emission in scenes as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a tweak to this fire. Now here, what I've done is gone ahead and swap my fire a shader for an emission shader here. Now, if I go ahead here and mute all these lights, you will see that we are actually getting light from our fire, something not previously possible from emission shaders in Eevee. If I go ahead and switch over here, you can see that we are not getting any light from the fire. Now you can keep up with some of these changes here on the Blender project page for EV Next, where they actually have a checklist so you can keep up with the progress as it goes and see some of the changes as well. So I will link this below. My dynamic VFX pack is now on sale at Blender Market, and this has completely customizable VFX assets that you can drag and drop right into your viewport, both EV and Cycles compatible. If you're interested, you can also go check out a free sample pack. Currently, I'm running a sale. See the description for more details. Also, if you're interested in my Patreon, I have materials, projects, time lapses, video walkthroughs, and discounts available there as well. Let's return to that question from the opening of the video. Is EV Next going to replace cycles. Now that it has ray tracing and global illumination and other features, aren't they essentially doing the same thing? Well, not entirely. The type of ray tracing that EV Next uses is different from that of cycles, which is still much more accurate, albeit much slower. However, I think what we're seeing here is that the gap between the two render engines is slowly but surely bridging. So what does that mean for the future? of render engines and how we use them. And to talk about this, I think we need to step outside of Blender for a moment and look at another piece of software called Unreal Engine 5 with its Lumen real-time render engine lighting system, which can yield at times under the right circumstances, photorealistic results. But that last part is key under certain circumstances because there's still things that we can't really produce in real-time render engines as well as an offline render engine such as Cycles or Octane. And you may already be aware, but oftentimes those things are things such as subsurface scattering, glass, or anything else that has reflective or refractive abilities. Oftentimes the things we're seeing in real-time render engines are mimicking those types of light bounces, but not able to replicate them accurately like we get in offline render engines such as Octane, Arnold, or Cycles. But what does this mean for the future of render engines like the question we propose? Well, it'll get to the point that with our offline rendering, we are so close to mimicking real-time light rays that the eye likely won't be able to distinguish the difference. Meanwhile, we will see with real-time rendering that it is continually getting closer and closer to those final results. And as I said in the beginning of the video, kind of bridging a gap between the two. And I think that at one point, we're going to see those two meet in the middle and the difference in between the two will become negligible. So yes, I do believe that the future of render technology will eventually shift towards real-time rendering. What do you think? Do you think we'll ever go to real-time rendering full-time? And when do you think that'll happen? Comment below.